we fix bad behavior? Now from this statement, there were two obvious questions. The first is who decides if that behavior is bad? Well, we do. But in most cases, it's very clear when people are demonstrating a behavior that is not in their best interests. Last week, I reviewed a client file of a pensioner that, that lost about 2 million rand of their 7 million rand in retirement capital. That's about a third. By moving all of their money to income funds when markets fell last year, in March. This is a substantial behavior tax that we need to eliminate and get rid of. The second question is, how do we fix bad behavior? The answer here lies part in, in a deeper understanding of what investors actually want. Now the 80s and 90s saw the world fixated on mental shortcuts and processing errors that exposed us as irrational. But the new wave of behavioral finance is more focused on real people and what they want. So what do we want from our investments? And this has been shown a lot in research. Firstly, we want security. Human beings are terrified of losses. A global survey conducted in 23 countries showed that people will only give up about 12% of their wealth for a shot at a 50% wealth boost. So fear dominates greed. Secondly, we want to stay true to our values. People also get expressive and emotional benefits from investing. Our investments can say something about us and also make us feel a certain way. Think about responsible investing in terms of environmental, social and governance factors, or ESG. Thirdly and lastly, we want social status, even though we don't like to admit it. Western culture ties our own well-being to that of our peers. Now ask yourself if risk for investors is best measured in variance of a portfolio, or rather in terms of not satisfying these very important ones. And these are really the bridges that we build. Behavioral science should really be the keystone of every business. US-based research published in the Challenger Cell showed that firms claiming openly to be customer-centric primarily communicated information about themselves, their own products and services. But true customer centricity really is about telling customers something about themselves, and that really is making it personal. This is far more effective as a signal of our intention to help them satisfy their needs and wants. With a deeper understanding of our customers or investors and how they are processing information at different points of the market cycle, we are able to intervene and help them minimize errors. In doing so, we can do a few things. Firstly, design more appropriate investments. Think of mapping out the set of foods that give the best nutrition at the lowest possible cost. Is there any point if no one wants to eat them? What if another constraint is that the diet should be palatable? This may give a very different set of foods. This is no different from constructing portfolios. Mean variance optimize portfolios a little use if investors can't stick to them. Secondly, we need to give better advice, or we can use this information to give better advice. Understanding the, the investor's psychological makeup and predisposition to cognitive and emotional errors is crucial for the wealth manager of the future in their role as a financial therapist. The investor should happily pay investment fees for an advisor that is able to diagnose the client and have the right conversations along the investment journey to ensure they reach their goals. And finally, we can deliver better marketing and communication strategies. Saying the right things to the right people at the right times and presenting information and alternatives to customers when they need it most to make better decisions is really the key to truly making it personal. How are we going to use behavior patterns to give better advice? The behavior tax happens when investors trade off an immediate emotional need for financial security for future investment returns. To manage and ultimately eliminate this cost, however, it is crucial that we understand the investor's risk behavior. We all have long-term relatively stable preferences for risk. We either like it or we don't, and this is linked to our personality. Extroverted individuals, for example, have been shown to be quite tolerant for risk, while neurotic people, for example, are quite risk-averse. Whatever our long-term risk preferences are, however, the short-term is usually where things go very, very wrong. COVID-19 happens and our long-term preferences go out of sync with the risk we are perceiving in markets around us. When we perceive losses, our behavior changes, and we use something called prospect theory to quantify when investors begin experiencing a loss, and so when their behavior is going to change. Interestingly, this point doesn't have to be a 0% return. In fact, we calculated investment returns separating gains and losses in South Africa to be around 12.5%. As returns dip below this point, investors become nine times more likely to switch their investments to something performing better, which exposes them or could expose them to the behavior tax. We've identified five distinct behavior patterns over market cycles from avoiders who get stuck in safe assets for long periods of time to assertive investors who are always on the lookout for the next top performing asset. Once we've linked these behavior patterns to psychometric personality traits, we have the basis for what we need to predict an investor's behavior based on their personality alone. 
we can then intervene before investors make decisions that would result in a behaviour tax.